Um, all right. So Harry's giving me looks now, so I'll just introduce the first speaker, uh, um, who is Dr. Fujio Abe from the National Institute for Material Science in Japan. And he will be telling us about boron type 4 cracking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Fujio Abe from National Institute for Material Science, NIMS. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say my sincere thanks to Professor Patricia for accepting my presentation. Uh, the title of my presentation is Boron Type of Cracking. It's a power plant steel. And my co-authors are Dr. Tabuchi, Dr. Tsukamoto, and Dr. Liu at NIMS. So uh, I will talk about, at first, the background and objectives, and then microstructure and creep strength of heat-affected zone of wood welded joints, suppression of type 4 cracking by boron, and alloy design of 9% chromium steel with high uh, creep strength and no type of cracking at 650 degrees Celsius. Finally, I will summarize my presentation. In coal-fired power plants, the ste uh, higher steam temperature is strongly desired in order to improve efficiency and also in order to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. At present, the maximum steam temperature of coal-fired power plants in Japan is 610 degrees Celsius or 620 degrees Celsius. It depends on high temperature creep strengths of heat resistant steels for boiler and turbine components. So uh, the development of a high strength uh, ferritic heat resistant steels can contribute to the improvement of uh, to increase uh, steam temperature. But Conventional ferritic heat resistant steels, such as 9% chromium steel, shows significant degradation in welded joint, as shown here, at temperature higher than 600 degrees Celsius. Here, a high chromium concentration, such as 9%, is necessary from a viewpoint of oxidation resistance at elevated temperature. Uh, the degradation takes place at heat-affected zone of welded joints. Heat-affected zone is a narrow zone adjacent, narrow zone of base metal adjacent to weld fusion line. The microstructure of heat-affected zone is altered by thermal cycle during welding. This degrades the creep strength. <coughs> And uh, uh, at present, the heat resistant steels are used for long times over 100,000 uh, 100, hours. So, for the uh, achievement of long term safety of uh, power, plants, uh, power plants at elevated temperature, the mitigation or suppression of type of cracking is necessary. But, uh, uh, here, I'd like to say the creep. Creep is a slow and time-dependent plastic deformation uh, over extended periods at elevated temperature. For example, at 650 degrees Celsius and 60 megapascal here, uh, conventional 9 chromium steel, specified as grade 92, gradually deforms by creep and eventually ruptures at about uh, 100,000 hours. But uh, you can see here, welded joint ruptures at about 10,000 hours. It's uh, only one-tenth of the creep life of base metal. So we need uh, mitigation or suppression of type of, cracker, type of cracking uh, for the increasing steam temperature. Recently, we found the addition of a small amount of boron suppresses 
typo cracking. So uh, the objectives of my presentation is to make, make clear mechanisms responsible for lower creep strength of heat affected zone of conventional steel grade 92 than its base metal. To make clear boron effect on suppression of typo cracking in heat affected zone and to establish alloy design of nine chromium steel with high strength and no typo cracking. <coughs> the microstructure of heat affected zone in weld joints gradually changes depending on the distance from weld fusion line. It means depending on the thermal cycling condition during welding. Therefore, using weighted joint specimen, it is very difficult to make clear microstructure mechanical property relationship. So we used simulated heat affected zone specimens prepared by heat treatment. And the thermal cycle conditions for the preparation of simulated heat affected zone specimens are shown here. Specimens were rapidly heating to a peak temperature and then rapidly cooled. This simulates the thermal cycle during welding. Uh, post weld heat treatment, PWHT, was carried out for uh, each specimen, including uh, waste metal. And uh, we could obtain uniform microstructure uh, simulating the microstructure at each part of heat affected zone by changing the uh, peak temperature from 8 to 10 degrees Celsius to 11, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, uh, and uh, we carried out uh, for, ah, sorry. We carried out uh, uh, for conventional steel grade 92, two, two different heat treatment before thermal cycle. Uh, in order to obtain two different microstructures having the same grain size, but different amount of grain boundary M23C6 carbide. So uh, grade 92 was subjected to normalizing and tempering heat treatment. This is a normal heat treatment condition for grade 92. And grade 92 NN was subjected to normalizing followed by sub-zero treatment in liquid nitrogen in order to completely transform retained austenite <coughs> present after normalizing to martensite. After heat treatment, uh, after thermal cycling, we carried out creep test at 650 degrees Celsius for up to about 10,000 hours by using specimen having a six millimeter uh, gauge diameter and 30 millimeter gauge length. Next, let me talk about experimental results. This figure shows time to rupture of grade 92 and grade 92 NN at 650 degrees Celsius and 110 megapascal as a function of peak temperature in the summer cycle. Here, these data are data for base metal. And you can see, uh, Grade 92 exhibit a significant decrease in time to rupture after thermal cycle to a peak temperature near AC3. On the other hand, grade 92 NN exhibit a, a time to rupture is substantially the same as base metal independent of peak temperature. This means uh, no degradation. This means a significant degradation in creep strength. The right hand picture shows an uh, optical micrograph after summer, uh, AC3 summer cycle, where grain boundaries are traced so that uh, grain size is clearly identified. Both grade 92 and grade 92 NN exhibit fine grained microstructure, having grain size of smaller than uh, 10 micrometer, which is a uh, significantly smaller than the grain size of base metal of 50 micrometer. I would like to say, <coughs> I'd like to emphasize, 
many researchers and engineers consider grain refinement is a main, main reason for the degradation in creep strength in heat affected zone after AC3 summer cycle. But you can see here the time to rupture of grade 92NN is substantially the same as the base metal in spite of fine grain. Therefore, present results suggest grain refinement is not the main reason for the degradation and creep strength after AC3 heating. In order to make clear why grade 92 exhibits a significant decrease in creep strength, we carried out detailed microstructure observations and we also examined uh, creep deformation behavior. This figure shows scanning electron micrograph in the vicinity of prior oscillant grain boundaries of fine grains and transmission electron micrograph inside grain after AC3 summer cycle. You can see here grade 92 exhibit, uh, exhibit a, a very few precipitous homes at grain boundaries of fine grain microstructure. Inside grain, grade 92 consists of equi-axis subgrains containing low density of dislocations and sparse distribution of large M23C6 carbide. So uh, present results suggest boundary and sub-boundary hardening is significantly reduced in grade 92 after AC3 summer cycle. On the other hand, grade 92 NN exhibit a, a last mountain cytic microstructure. And I'd like to emphasize, not only prior ocean grain boundaries, but also last boundaries are covered by enough M23C6 carbide. It means no reduction of boundary and sub-boundary hardening. This figure compares creep deformation behavior between grade 92 after AC3 summer cycle and base metal as shown by creep rate versus time curves at 650 degrees Celsius and 90 megapascal. The creep and creep rate curves of grade 92 consist of primary or transient creep region here where creep rate decreases with time and of tertiary or acceleration creep region uh, where creep rate increases with time after reaching a minimum creep rate. There is a substantially no steady state region. And, uh, <coughs> you can see here, important point is uh, the onset of acceleration creep takes place at earlier time compared with base metal. This results in a higher minimum creep rate and a shorter time to rupture. Shorter time to rupture means uh, degradation in creep strength. And I would like to emphasize the reduction of boundary sub and subboundary hardening due to poor grain boundary M23C6 carbide promotes microstructure recovery during creep. Therefore, the onset of acceleration creep takes place at earlier time. This is the main reason for the a higher minimum creep rate and degradation in creep strength in grade 92 after AC3 summer cycle. Next, uh, time to rupture of uh, nine chromium boron steel is substantially the same as a base metal, independent of peak temperature, indicating uh, substantially no degradation even after AC3 summer cycle. Nine-chrom boron steel consists of basically coarse-grained microstructure, having a grain size of about 200 micrometer. Uh, <coughs> you can see here, uh, along gr uh, prior oceanic grain boundaries, uh, enough m 20 c 6 carbides are distributed. And the inside grain, the nine-chrom boron steel consists of blocks, and the block boundary are also covered by enough M23C6 carbide. And the uh, nichrom boron steel also consists of fine grains along grain boundaries of coarse grains. And looking at fine grains, you can see here the iron tungsten intermetallic compound precipitate at grain boundaries of fine grains 
so that uh, uh, not only grain boundaries but also uh, block boundary inside the grain are covered by enough precipitate in nichrome boron still after AC3, even after AC3 summer cycle. This suggests no degradation uh, in creep strength even after uh, AC3 summer cycle. So next, let us consider the microstructure evolution during the summer cycle of welding. Question, a question is uh, why microstructure is different between conventional steel grade 92 and a new steel nichrome boron steel after AC3 summer cycle. So this figure shows schematically the microstructure evolution during summer cycle in grade 92. Uh, during heating, nucleation and growth of gamma phase, it's a diffusive alpha gamma transformation, produces fine-grained microstructure when the peak temperature is not so high at around AC3 temperature. In grade 92, carbon nitrides such as M23C6 carbides also became dissolved during heating, but cannot really dissolve completely when the temp uh, peak temperature is not so high at around AC3. It means the re -dis uh, re uh, dissolution of M23C6 carbide is only a little bit when peak temperature is AC3. And uh, during cooling, molten site transformation takes place. And during subsequent uh, post weld heat treatment, M23C6 carbide, it's a uh, chromium rich carbide, M23C6 carbide precipitate again, preferentially at existing carbon nitrides and uh, uh, also at grain boundaries of fine grain. But resultant microstructure shows uh, poor M23C6 carbide at grain boundary because the amount of dissolution of M23C6 carbide only a little bit, it means uh, amount of re-precipitation of M23C6 carbide during post weather heat treatment. It's also only a little bit, so cannot cover all the grain boundaries uh, of fine grained microstructure. Here, I'd like to emphasize the fine grained microstructure and the poor M23C6 carbide at grain boundaries are overlapped in the temperature range near AC3 where type 4 cracking takes place. But as I mentioned before, the reduction of boundary and sub-boundary hardening is the most important for the degradation in creep strength after AC3 summer cycle, so we think. In nichrome boron steel, during heating, at first, uh, <coughs> fine grains forms at grain boundaries of coarse grained microstructure. Then inside grain, uh, mountain site transformation takes place. You can see here, this is a direct observation of nichrome boron steel surface during heating by means of confocal laser mic uh, microscope. It's an insight observation during heating, and it clearly shows a high surface relief at a temperature just above AC3. It means, it suggests, molten site transformation takes place in nichrome boron steel during heating. The molten site transformation introduces high density dislocation, but recrystallization cannot take place because boron retards recrystallization and boron in increases recrystallization temperature and resultant microstructure after post the heat treatment, the resultant microstructure is substantially the same as a base metal, although the fine grains forms at grain boundaries. Next, so uh, let us consider the behavior of boron during heating. Uh, using a binding energy between boron and grain boundaries reported for type 316 stainless steel we estimated the uh, segregation of boron at grain boundaries as a function of temperature. At the uh, AC3 temperature, it's uh, about uh, 920 degrees Celsius. Uh, segregation of several percent boron can be achieved at grain boundaries. On the other hand, the boron concentration inside grain is substantially the same as the initial value. We think 
グレーンバウンドリーセグレゲーションのボーロン、レデューセスグレーンバウンドリーエナジー、and makes グレーンバウンドリス less effective as heterogeneous nucleation site for alpha gamma transformation. It means the retardation of, ah, sorry, retardation of diffusive alpha gamma transformation. On the other hand, a new Uh, nucleation of gamma phase uh, by diffusive alpha gamma transformation also promoted at the grain boundaries. Ah, also, okay. <laughs> so, uh, it has uh, some. Uh, and also, we uh, showed the uh, uh, separation of type of cracking with joints, and uh, we already designed a uh, uh, new Marby and steel. It's a uh, Uh, high strength down grade 92 and uh, no type of cracking, even in wedge joints. Uh, and this is uh, my summary. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so thanks so much for that talk. Um, it's a shame that you ran out of time. Maybe we can carry on that discussion later. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, that was an excellent presentation. I found that very interesting. Thank you. Um, all of your microstructural investigations, they were done on HAZ simulation specimens. Is that correct? Uh, pardon me? Um, all your microstructural investigations were done on the HAZ simulation specimens. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, were you, have you had a chance to check whether you see the same microstructural evolution in a cross-world specimen? Uh, yeah, uh, we observed the microstructure of a heat object zone in cross-world specimen. So if you speak into the microphone so that uh, okay. the internet can hear you. So uh, it depends on the distance from uh, world fusion line. In the, in the vicinity of base metal, it shows uh, fine grains. And uh, we confirmed that uh, at a simulate, simulated uh, microstructure. Right, okay. Um, and the, your creep testing on the <laughs> HAZ simulation specimens, yes. that was, uh, that you th these were uh, made in a Glebal or a, a thermomechanical simulator, is that, or, or were they furnace yeah. heat treatments? <laughs> We yes, yes, because uh, uh, we would like to make clear yeah, Microstructure creep behavior relationship. So we need the uniform microstructure. Okay. <laughs> so they were all done in yeah, the yeah, furnace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I wanted to find out if you've studied the effect of uh, your boron treatment okay. and your heat treatments yeah. on the uh, MX precipitates, which occur within the grains or instead yeah, of the. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I've read, uh, so first, first of all, thank you for your uh, presentation, which was really very, very interesting. Uh, I've read that uh, uh, you have added 90 ppms of boron. <laughs> well, why, have each, is there a special reason why you chose to add 90 ppm of boron? So, uh, <coughs> it's a very important question. <laughs> so you can see here, this is uh, something like a phase diagram. The, we would like to obtain a maximum soluble boron and maximum soluble nitrogen. So it's uh, located here. Kind of so it's, uh, you can see the boron concentration here. I'll be nice to see you again. <laughs> okay. I, I, I want to ask the question <laughs> that I always ask at this time. You, you present information about basic precipitates <laughs> with little information about how the creep test samples fail. Mm -hmm. uh, damage ah. is clearly very, very important. Mm -hmm. I, I've okay, seen okay. type 4 cracking, yeah, 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 no yeah. alloy steels yeah, yeah, yeah. in a variety yeah, of yeah, micro yeah. steels, yeah. and the subtlety of yeah. damage mm -hmm. is different. Not mm -hmm. all grain okay, okay, two okay. steels mm -hmm. show the same tendency. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are creep, creepy people. <laughs> I, well, so, so I need you to tell me what's going <laughs> on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, your question about a cross or? Cro any, any, anything you uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in case of cross, cross world, type of fracture usually shows a brittle manner uh, along the uh, heat object zone. But uh, our steel showed a uh, uh, fracture at the base metal. This after 
uh, after reduction of area. But in, ca and, uh, uh, in case of uh, simulated heat absorption specimens, it's something like base metal. The fracture manner is something like base metal because it's a uniform microstructure. About uh, the mu phase, uh, <laughs> metallic. Um, now you observed that in your newly uh, modified yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, uh, did you also observe in the uh, conventional uh, <laughs> okay. uh, which uh, goes under a, a similar heat treatment? So many people thought uh, lava phase is the first uh, candidate, lava phase, Fe two W, but. Uh, uh, Carefully observing the uh, 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 electron diffraction and X-ray diffraction, uh, mu phase shows an extra peak. And but uh, mu phase is a summary not so stable. So during creep, mu phase quickly change to lab phase. We observe. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, <laughs> nice presentation. I'm just wondering if there was Chromium boron, because uh, chromium high boron con concentration. But it depends on the uh, concentration of boron and chromium and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have never observed chromium boron. If you exceed the concentration of uh, boron and nitrogen above that blue line and you <laughs> form boron nitride, <laughs> is the boron nitride cubic or hexagonal? Does it matter? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure now. But uh, boron nitride forms at high temperature. So it's a large particle, sometimes several micrometer. And the uh, important point is uh, formation of boron nitride consumes soluble boron. Soluble boron. I understand. It's, uh, most, we think most important point because uh, it, uh, soluble boron is uh, essential for the... In order for me to theoretically draw that line, mm -hmm. I need the energy of boron nitride. Mm -hmm. And the boron nitride energies are very different for cubic uh, or uh, hexagonal. Anyway, That's we uh, okay. Uh, Anyway, we observe the formation of boron nitride. Okay. Professor Abe, that's very, one of the things which went by, which may be good for a discussion, is that you observed a displacive transformation of ferrite <laughs> to austenite. <laughs> and that'll be interesting to discuss. How did you come to that conclusion? It'll be very helpful. Thank you. So uh, it's a competition. We think it's a competition of diffusive transformation. Of, uh, our idea is uh, boron retards diffusive alpha gamma transformation. But uh, from an energetic point of view, <laughs> it needs transformation. So at a, at a problem is uh, pa, pa, uh, by diffusion or by shear. Okay. It's something okay. Uh, like a uh, malaging steel. All right, thanks very much everyone and thank you Dr. Abe for that fantastic talk.